I am not a member of any political party, Loretta Anoche tells the Senate. And how can we rate President Buhari's ability to manage diversity so far? Well, this is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anako. Special Assistant to the President on Social Media, Loretta Onoche, has denied her membership of the ruling All Progressive Congress APC three times. Although this followed her screening by senators to determine her fitness for appointment as National Commissioner for the Independent National Electoral Commission, she said she parted ways with the APC and stopped her volunteer work with the Buhari Support Organization in 2019. She admitted part of the Buhari campaign organization in 2015, um, she left it before her appointment as special assistant on social media. She said those opposed to her nomination were after her because of her due process stance and believe in the rule of law. Well, joining us to discuss this is Oponabo Inko Taria. He's a political analyst and Isaac Obobola, who is the River State APC caretaker chairman. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. All right, um, I don't know if you can hear me. Please unmute yourselves so you can hear me. I I'm going to start with um, you, Opunabo. Um, can you tell me exactly why you think, as an onlooker, the president seemed to be a bit obsessed with the idea of this woman um, you know, being an INEC, uh, an INEC uh, member of the electoral body? Um, what exactly is the reason um, for pres the president's stands on making sure that she is uh, in as a part of INEX um, board because a lot of people have criticized her. There have been petitions written against her and she even um, had come to the Senate to allude to the fact that there have been several petitions against her. There have been several people who have kicked against it. But although she's saying this is because she has a stand on due process. Yes, uh, Marianne, I honestly cannot appreciate or part of Mr. President's amorous romance with transgression of law, policies, and due process. I really cannot appreciate that. Because uh, this is not the first time. We also have the issue of uh, Magu, who was rejected by the Senate how many times, and the first president stubbornly kept it there in acting capacity, despite the report from the excesses of DSS, which is even uh, a part of the president. So this is another one now. Now, uh, Loretta Anoche cannot repudiate her membership of the APC. It is simple. I mean, I listen to the paragraph of lies and absurdities, and in all fairness, it grates on my nerves to hear Loretta. In 2019, she said she had resigned according to her in 2019. But in 2020, she altered in a court of law, admitting the fact that she's a member of the APC. And now, before the Senate, just yesterday or the day before, she has also denied. So this is a contradiction of paradox. How did you reconcile this two stories? She said she resigned in 2019. And in 2020, she voted in court as a member of the APC. And in 2021, because she has been nominated for commissionership of INEC, she has denied it. So, in fact, that denial has cast a further slur upon her integrity. And if what one cannot fathom is why, if the Nigerian, the Senate, is saying or are saying that, look, we don't want a particular person for obvious reasons. For obvious, there are other competent hands all over the country, including from the state, from our own state, Delta State. So if members are saying for obvious reasons, we don't want a particular person, please, we are not saying we are going to give you another person. You uh, uh, drop that person and take another person of your choice that will generate less courage. I don't know why that should be a problem. Mm. And what one can extrapolate from this is simple, because 
It is obvious that she remains a member of APC. So what one can, one can extrapolate view from it is that there is an ulterior motive, an intention to win the 2023 election. But Mr. President is not contesting in 2023. Hmm. So is he doing it for the party? This is the common goal. Otherwise, we don't want this woman. You also know, Mr. President, that she, was a, she has been a member of the party. Her membership is not easy. It is not a sort of official membership. You already know that. And it is generating a lot of courage. Why not just leave her and go for somebody else? This is why a lot of people say, are saying that the presidency is plotting to read the 2022 election. I mean, these are arguments or these are allegations, these are criticisms that ordinarily should have been avoided if you had just left her and selected somebody else. There are so many people that are die hard wives. So many people that are die hard babies that even the world might not know. You just go for them. I'm not this same lady. What is so particular about this lady that you must get appointed with her? Well, I think that that's I the, mean, that's the question. Especially, I think that's the question I have for Mr. Gwobula. Well, I, before I go to Mr. Isaac Gwobula, I want us to go to that video um, from the um, National Assembly. And um, let's take a look at that video, and then my question to uh, Mr. Isaac will come up. I would like uh, to answer the question one more time. Are you a member of the political party? Well, are you a member of the political party? I'm not. Put it up. I just ask you again. Are you a member of any political party as president? I am not. So, um, Mr. Bobula, you are, of course, an APC chieftain in your state. And um, I'd like to refer you to the fact that. Um, the name in Ward 4, um, the register of the APC in Anyocha, local government area of Delta State, is Loretta Alnoche. It's not been erased. It's not been taken out. Uh, if she's denying this outrightly, how does she hope to regain public confidence, even if she you know, eventually is cleared and approved um, by some stroke of miracle by the Senate? What kind of integrity is she supposed to portray as a commissioner on our electoral body? Mr. Wobula, can you hear me? Uh, I think we have a problem with uh, Mr. Wobula's connection. Can you unmute yourself so you can, um, we can hear you? Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to throw the question back to um, uh, Opunabo. So, like I said to Wobula, you did hear my question, um, Opunabo. Her name is in the ward um, register for Aniocha. And it's her no, full name no, written there. Yes. Um, so how, how, what sort of integrity? Because again, uh, for us to have free, fair, credible elections, this is something that we're aiming for come 2023. Um, what sort of integrity is she bringing to the table with all of this hula baloo and the, the imbroglio as to whether she is a member of the APC or not? And we could see her live on tape denying her membership. Well, like, like, like I said, if you listen to my opening statement, I said it has further cast a slur on her integrity. Because it is obvious that, oh, I, I don't know what is wrong with this. Sorry about that. Because it, it is obvious that she's a member of the APC. No doubt about that. That is it with Fraggen. And now she's gone on air to say, and make Matthew, after taking an oath, in court in 2020, she did not after the go back to a the same court or anywhere to say she has resigned her membership. Can so you hear me? The oath she took in court still stands, and yes. that is why I say it's going to have in fact negatively on her integrity. Yeah. And with this, even if she is cleared by the Senate, a lot of people will believe, even if APC wins the election free and there, wherever she's sent to, a lot of people will believe that she must have manipulated the election.
Let me tell you, even in the court of law, when you have an issue against the presiding judge and you write and establish it, the matter before that judge is transferred so as to avoid bias and to ensure, ensure sagacity to be. It was Justice Stewart who said justice must not only be seen to have been done, but must not only be done, but must be seen to have been done. Okay. In other words, in the eyes of the public, it should be seen that sagacity prevails. Okay. That is the problem we are having. And that's why a lot of us are saying, since her pro, uh, uh, appointment is generating a lot of criticism, Hello? why not drop her? We can and hear you, Mr. Here. Bobula. We can, can hear you. Hear we can hear you. No, oh, okay. I'm sorry to cut in, uh, Mr. Funabo. Yes. Um, no, it's okay, my brother. It's okay, my brother. Go ahead. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, my, my, yes. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, for me, we we must um, at this point learn to respect constituted authorities. If we voted people to go to the National Assembly and they are there legitimately carrying out their responsibilities, should we not give them the opportunity, you know, to finish um, whatever is before them, the assignment before them. If you've paid your, um, uh, Nigerians have um, sent their complaints, perhaps, backed with evidence. So you allow that institution to uh, do its work and uh, not try to, in any way, influence, you know, the outcome of that process. If you have when you say when you say influence, how how do you? How, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Bobula. I, I need to come in there. When you say try to influence, nobody really can influence the Senate. I mean, the the normal way is to write petitions, is to you know um, send letters and and evidence if you have any. And I think that many yeah. people have done so. But when you say try to influence, who are the people you're referring to and who, who has the power uh, to try to influence what the fact, Senate is doing? In fact, trying to intimidate the National Assembly. Who? Well, I saw, who is uh, trying to intimidate saw, the National uh, Assembly? My elder brother, Secundus, the National Party uh, chairman of the uh, PDP, uh, no, um, in a protest, in a, an open protest to the National Assembly. It, that's intimidation. Yeah, no, but it, but it, but it is your... their constitutional right. Every Nigerian has a right to peaceful protest. As and, long as and, it is peaceful. If I may finish. If I may finish. Now, you, you will see that sometimes when we hastily uh, carry out um, and uh, we hastily try to condemn somebody, at the end of the day, uh, perhaps the person may not even be culpable. Let me give you a clear example. You know all the hula balu about uh, the former minister of finance, minister minister of finance, Adiosun, and uh, all the heat around it and all that that led to her resignation, or uh, 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 you know, from the office at that time. But at the end of the day, the court the court has vindicated her. Um, at the end of the day, so why don't you allow the institutions to function? Mr. Allow Bob them to take decisions. Mr. Bobola, can I come I, in I just for a second? So, sorry, Mr. Punabo, just, just a second. Hold on, hold on, gentlemen. Yes. I would like to set the record straight for Mr. Bobola. Um, Kemi Adeshino went to the court, um, to De Kemi Adeshino, I beg your pardon, went to the court um, to, she actually went to verify if she was supposed to be um, doing her NYSC as at the time, if she was eligible she didn't go to court as per the case of forgery, which is still, which is forgery, still not being taken to court. That is a criminal investigation or a criminal case in itself. What she went to court for is a totally and, different and, thing, which and, and has been set the, aside. He's talking of the, the hula balu. Mary Ann, he's talking of the hula balu. Don't forget that in, in her own case, it was even NYSC that said they were not the... the the organization that issued the certificate to her. So which other, which, 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 even if you go to court, it is the same NYC she is going to invite to testify. And NYC so, said they did not issue that certificate to her. Well, well, as we speak today, the status, the position is that a court of competent jurisdiction has made a pronouncement with respect to her case. If you think that there is a criminal... No, no, and, we, and we're still uh, saying... Uh, but I don't know what... I, Oh, gentlemen, let's just let's let's try as much as possible to you know uh, exhibit some decorum. Uh, Mr. Bobula, the case yes. that Mr. Adelshu, Mrs. Adelshu take took to court was not about forgery. She went to verify. She was inquiring 
from the court and the court has said that she was not eligible because at the time she was she had graduated she was not a holder of the nigerian passport she was not a citizen of the country and therefore she didn't really need her nysc to be uh, or, or to to be given any appointment in the country that is a totally different thing exactly, exactly. so let's not exactly dwell on that let's move on and to Ms. Onoche. That, that she had to leave the office she was occupying at that time because of pressure, the same similar pressure from everywhere. But does that, that take away from the fact that there was a forgery uh, of a finish? certificate? You will not allow me to finish. Go ahead. Yes, because uh, they felt that she did not, uh, that, you know, there were issues around her NYSC uh, uh, certificate and all of that. And that led to her resignation. And then what is what has what has come? What, What's the outcome of any investigation if you say there were criminal elements uh, 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 in the matter? I don't know nothing. And then she's gone to court to say, oh, at that particular point, was I eligible or not for appointment? And the court said she was. You know, so that is, why don't we allow the institutions to function? We have, we have here, that, uh, um, in this country, the agitation has always been that we should have strong institutions. Strong institutions means allow the institutions to do their work. It's not for you to intimidate and uh, carry out all manner of uh, uh, public uh, uh, demonstrations and all of that. She was uh, yeah, not allowing the, the institutions with, um, uh, with the responsibilities to function, you know, to carry out the assignments. Allow them to carry before, if it were in court, if it were, uh, we will say that the matter is sub judice and then we cannot uh, even discuss it at all. CDET has done its work. They have already screened the candidates, apart from herself, other uh, uh, nominees. They've been screened. Allow the outcome. Let us know what the outcome will be. Okay. Thank you. All right. Now, um, back to you, um, uh, In this, I mean, the situation that we are seeing now, um, it's a bit messy because um, there I have spoken with lawyers on this show on the same issue and they have said that if you are partisan you're not allowed to work in INEC because of course you would one way or the other whether you do it or not you would be termed to have influenced one thing or the other um, it's a constitutional provision would, would it would it be honorable for I mean because if the Senate of course we have the APC as the majority in the Senate, if the Senate does allow her to go through with this, um, would it be honorable for her to take that office after all of this outrage? And to borrow Mr. Bobola's, uh, some of his words, he said that uh, there's been undue pressure and influence. Would it still be honorable for her to take that office? And would it, one way or the other, smear the idea of a free, fair, credible election come 2023? First. And so I agree with him on the issue of influence. Because it is the right of every Nigerian to have a say on everything that concerns the country. And everybody above 18 will be eligible to vote having registered. And if that person is concerned about the integrity of the electoral process of his vote, because that will determine who becomes his governor, his member of House of Reps his senator, his president, and what happened. So everybody has a say. And first of all, before you go out, we are talking of voters' apathy. Before you go out to vote, you must have confidence in the system. And that is why people are reacting. So everybody has a right to say what he wants to say. Of course, there, there is a saying that you have your, the majority have their, their say, but minority will have their way. No problem. If at the end of that, after all, Mangu was there for five years, so if at the end of the day, like Magu was indicted by DSS, so are you going to say, oh, we should have all kept quiet because uh, the incident was doing his job or Mr. President has made up his mind? No, even if Mr. President is to decide on an issue, it is our right to criticize that issue. Because Mr. President is acting on our behalf. The student is acting on our behalf. We send them there. So we have a right to tell them, whether open publicly or secretly, to say, this is what we want or we don't want this. But if they go ahead to do what they want, fine. Nobody's going to tell them, recall them. That's not the issue. So we have not had our say. Uh, I, 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 I'm curious. Uh, Number two. Sorry? I'm curious. Let me just quickly put this in. Uh, Mr. Bobola also talked about, he yes. said something about, you know, um, 
Prince Uche second is, you know, protesting outside of the Senate. If the tables were turned, will the PDP be doing different? Would they do anything uh, differently? Uh, uh, and could uh, this, can uh, this, could, can this, President could this also be very political now. because, uh, it's a question, you can answer it. Could it be a political stand because... Yeah, yeah. I wanna... Go ahead. No, let's say that. You, you know, the, the, the truth is, the truth is, I'm not a member of PDP. So, I, but I want to be as fair and as objective as I can. The truth is, that is an opposition party. The PDP is an opposition party. And what the, the PDP, in fact, has not played its role as an opposition party strong enough till tomorrow I'll commend the APC. Pre dating 2015, because they, it was a violent opposition. Right now, the PDP is just kidding. So, the, the Mr. President has also led a protest. The city is uh, imagined as the, as the president of the country. It is a normal thing in any democratic society. In any civilized life, it's a normal Criticism is allowed anywhere in the world. Any country that is inferior to the is there. So, criticism is allowed anywhere in the world. Second, really, that is the role of respect, provided. The protest is invaluable. Then there is no problem. Then the party is expressing its view. It's expressing its stance. So I said nothing wrong with that. And that will not in any way influence the decision of Sili. It will not. Because the Senate members are also Nigerians. They are not uh, people from Spain, from Spain, not, not even space or wherever. Even Spain, they only know what is going on in the country. I've got a British just a British just issued a, a statement. So they are not people in space. They are all Nigerians. You cannot they already have the mindset. Because this is a, this is an issue that is on the front corner. Everybody is aware of everybody's sees of the facts. So you cannot say anybody is influencing anybody. Nobody is influencing anybody. Nigerians are expressing their views. That's the truth about it. Now uh, uh, back to you, um Mr. Bobula. Um the, going forward now, because we know Mr. President's body language and, and he, Mr. President's track record in terms of not shifting grounds, and I can make, I can point to several instances like the Mago situation, like the Twitter ban, and now again we have an Onochi uh, situation where whether she says she's a member or not, and all of the you know the facts that are on the ground, including that video that I played, what does this say about the APC and Mr. President? on the choices that he gets to make and, and how these choices affect us as Nigerians. Because whether we like it or not, her being a commission, an INEC commissioner, one way or the other, is going to either positively or negatively affect us as Nigerians. And we're at the receiving end. What does it say about the APC and Mr. President? Uh, thank you, Mary And I, I must observe that um, as, uh, as a moderator, and an umpire, you do not, um, uh, you don't. I'd like for uh, you to answer the question. We're not, we're not examining me, judgment. Mr. Ogbobula. No, nobody's passing judgment. Can you hear me? I asked a simple question. That's what you're doing. I said the getting, president does have a precedent. Here, getting this. Well, you can choose to answer my question, Mr. Ogbobula. We could just continue the show on examining my personality. But please answer my question. Sorry? Please answer my question. You don't, you don't. Going you, forward, what does this mean for the party? and expect me to, to be comfortable in a, in a program that you are moderating. No, it's... So, so, would you answer my question, or do you want me to rephrase it? Yeah. What do you there see as the outcome? Now, coming, yes, coming yes, yes, I know. The, the right of the president to make appointments. Well, it's his constitutional right. It's his legal right. Uh, as a president of the country, he, uh, he's, uh, he has the power and the right to make those, uh, uh, to nominate, make nominations and other appointments. Uh, if, fortunately, you know, you feel strongly about some of those appointments, and then we have bodies constitutionally uh, vested with the powers and the responsibility to screen and uh, scrutinize those appointments and take decision one way or the other, we should allow those institutions to function. That's all I'm saying. If you do not allow the process run its full, full course, then you are, you are not helping, you know, the, the, um, the, the, the demand or the request or the, 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 the push for um, strong institutions. That's my position. All That's right. my position. I allow you to run it full course. Thank you. All right. Finally, um, this is a woman, of course, and we were asking for more women to be represented. But, of course, um, 
a lot of people have also played the feminine card that if she were to be a man, that we probably wouldn't have the same kind of pushback that we're experiencing um, what, while we're seeing what is happening to uh, Miss Onoche. Um, but being a woman who's going to be on that panel, what changes do you think will happen in INEC? Because all we've seen are a group of men uh, before the Senate. Oh, that question was for you, Mr. Bobola. Oh, uh, sorry. I, uh, uh, if, you, if, you, if you can repeat the question. I was saying that I she's, was I was, Tara, I was talking Tara. about the fact that we have a woman on that uh, as a commissioner and what impact she would make because we're always asking for more representation for women. Uh, well, uh, if she's, um, uh, the sex does not matter. Uh, if a person is qualified for a position, the person uh, should function in that, in that capacity. Yeah, the sex doesn't matter. As far as I'm concerned, it's about qualification, it's about competence, it's about um, exposure, pedigree, and all of that. So if she's qualified, she's qualified. But allow the National Assembly to take the decision. Let the process run its full course. That's all my right. position. And finally, back to you, Opunabo. Um, going forward, what do you envisage will be the outcome of this? Uh, like Mr. Bobola said, we should let the Senate uh, run its course and then see what happens at the end of the day. But what do you see? What do you envisage? Well, what do we have this? I don't, I don't really know. After all, uh, from um, <coughs> what we've experienced in the past, even if you see the says no, Mr. President, well, my go ahead to appoint her. So I don't have to be said anything. I don't even think they are going to drop her. That's the truth. But the fact remains that we must be able to say our mind, ventilate our views when we believe that things are going wrong. It is extremely wrong and highly retrogressive for you to say, or anybody to say, that no matter what it is, you have to follow the individuals are the ones that make the strong institutions. Because the individuals are the ones that criticize the institutions and come up with laws that will strengthen the institutions. And if everybody remains silent, then it is going to be a field of, then you have dictators. You know, because it, there are laws. Even Mr. Pre Mr. President himself is guided by laws. And when you run foul of that law, people will talk. This is not dictatorship. That is why people are talking. Okay. I am not yeah, expecting I... anything different. If they drop her, fine, no problem. If they are good, good at well, fine. That will be in tandem with the with the wishes of, of most Nigeria. That will be. But if they also say to go ahead, then that will also affect negatively the credibility of the election. Okay. I want the APC to go on with with real free and fair. Uh, people all right. will say no, it is because of A B C. The same APC. Complain, demonstrated, not that they demonstrated, demonstrated when uh, this Amina, is this Amina was, was, was appointed and they were calling for her back. So, what is different? Why okay. would people it, talk? You can't gag them. Okay. You can't gag people. <laughs> it, 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 interestingly, Mr. Pudabo happens to be by Pudabo in Kotaria, happens to be my brother from River State. I did not hear his voice when the, uh, the governor of River State constituted the RISEC. River State, where you have, where you still have Justice, uh, retired Justice uh, Gio Mereji, who consists. We have to go. Brother, we have to go, gentlemen. I want to thank you. Thank you so much. We have to go. We're out of time. Punabo in Kotaria, Isaac Bobola, thank you very much for being part of the conversation. We'll take a short break now, and when we return, how successful has President Buhari been in managing diversity in Nigeria so far? Stay with us. We'll be right back.